Hello and welcome to Views on News. I am Jawati Hami. Yesterday, the provincial capital of Balochistan, Quetta, was rocked with a horrific suicide bombing which claimed four lives, including of a policeman banned Tariq Taliban Pakistan. The TTP has claimed the responsibility of this horrific attack. Today, in a press, Interior Minister Rana Sanawla said it is alarming and condemnable, but it will not be out of control. He urged the provincial governments, particularly in Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, to take this matter seriously. And he also said that uh, these provincial governments must seek help from the federal government whenever and wherever required. He also said uh, these terror activities by the ban tariq taliban Pakistan should be a matter of concern for the neighboring Afghanistan also. Earlier, at the start of this week, on Monday, the ban Tariq Taliban Pakistan had uh, announced ending the ceasefire uh, reached in June with the government authorities. Now, according to Pakistan Institute of Peace Studies, a think tank, uh, there was um, a rise of 51% in terror attacks since Afghan Taliban took over power in the Afghanistan uh, last year. And uh, as Pakistan had been paying a huge price over the years in order to curtail and combat terrorism on its soil, and immense sacrifices were made. And after uh, the uh, 2014, 16th of December, APS horrific attack in which our children were brutally slaughtered, a national consensus was formed and a 20-point national action plan was chalked out to eliminate the scourge from the soil. Know how uh, challenging is the new threat and what Pakistan needs to do in this regard and what happens to be the responsibility of the interim Afghan government. We'll be looking into these aspects in the light of uh, these rising incidents of terrorism in Pakistan. And to talk more about this, we are honored to have been joined in the studio by Dr. Sayyid Kaleem Imam. He's a security analyst. Uh, Dr. Imam, thank you very much for your time, for being on news. On news, really appreciate your time. And on Skype, at the same time, we are being joined by Brigadier Retired Mahmoud Shah. He's a senior analyst. Brigadier Shah, thank you very much for your time also for being on views. On thank news, you. really appreciate that. Now, uh, let me begin the discussion with you, Dr. Imam. Uh, Interior Minister Rana Sanawla says it won't uh, get out of control yet the provincial governments in KP and uh, the Balochistan province should take up the matter seriously. Uh, but at the same time, he also said that it is alarming and condemnable. How big a challenge this time it is for the authorities? Well, it won't get out of hand if they all work together. That's the first thing. Secondly, it is challenging and it has been going on for the last six, seven months now uh, that we are seeing the, the attacks especially in South and North Waziristan. We also saw it in Sawath. We saw this uh, bunch of ragtag people coming back to this area and we see a severe protest from the locals against them. And once they were back, uh, they started doing almost the same thing which they had been doing earlier. And uh, they were all, uh, many of them were eliminated, many of them just have to vacate. Uh, it was those 10 successful operations which was carried against uh, this uh, militant criminal organizations. Uh, uh, remember, the TTP is not any tribal formations. It's an organization now. So, uh, and s armed forces and the law enforcement agencies paid a very heavy price. A uh, lot of them were martyrs and they got rid of them. But all of a sudden, we see them, they are back. Yes, it is a challenge now and we need to see what are they up to. And uh, they have come up with the demands which, are, which cannot be met at all, like demerging FATA. Uh, they are also asking their territories back. And uh, most of these people are those people who fleed from the jails uh, when the Americans left the Afghanistan soil. So they're all criminal minded. And uh, uh, it's the time that state, the provincial government and the federal government get together. They should be on the same page. And there should be no reason that why uh, there may be politics at other places, but this is something specially for the masses over there. And it's time that they must act right now. Uh, right, your point is well taken. Uh, Dr. Shah, how do you think it is a, a challenge for the authorities in Pakistan, this new uptick in the incident, in incidents of terrorism in Pakistan? Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, I think it's not um, uh, a very big challenge. Uh, it's uh, the uh, uh, sort of 
policy uh, that the government of Pakistan is having towards the TTP and towards the Afghan new government. Uh, I think it has not been handled properly. Uh, I, I feel we should see a, a look at our constitution, uh, and the constitution has been extended up to the zero line now. Previously, there was FATA, and there were some negotiations which were carried out here and there because that law, uh, FATA, uh, uh, provided for some negotiations with the tribes, and uh, they were also considered within the tribes. So and now uh, the constitution has been extended. Uh, it is not possible to hold a negotiation by the government of Pakistan with any group of Pakistanis uh, who may be involved in any criminal activities. So therefore, uh, the negotiation which should have been taking place between the government of Pakistan and the Afghan government, uh, somehow we tried to negotiate with them, which was a wrong move. And uh, I think it should not be there. The negotiation should be the Afghan government. And the Afghan government is, uh, has promised this in Doha agreement that they will not let the Afghan side be used against its neighbors. And the neighbors include Pakistan, Iran, Central Asian Republics, three countries, China. Uh, so uh, these are the people, uh, they, they had promised this with these people, with the Chinese government and also with Central Asian Republics. And Pakistan was speaking for them uh, to these were the people like Russia and Americans that uh, Afghan Taliban are good people. They have no uh, ambitions outside Afghan territory and they will not really um, do anything beyond their borders. Uh, but Russia and Americans have been telling us again and again that probably you will be surprised what these people will do. Uh, anyway, uh, they say, they say still now that yes, we are duty bound not to let the Afghan side be used against us never, but we want you to have negotiation with these people. They are your people and you have. Now, China refused that they will not negotiate. Central Asian republics, all the three states, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, and uh, the other one, uh, all three refused that we will have no negotiation with these people uh, whosoever are, uh, uh, who have run away from the country and staying in Afghanistan. So here we, we made a fundamental, fundamental mistake of uh, talking to them uh, and that encouraged them to the extent that they are talking as if they are a state and they are saying that, okay, we will have ceasefire. Or we your point is well taken. What I understand from your take is uh, that uh, negotiations or the dialogue, that option was totally out of questions uh, uh, regarding um, when it comes to Pakistani authorities dealing with the uh, TTP in terms of uh, uh, negotiations and dialogue. Yes, absolutely. And I will say that uh, what you talk to the Afghan government, that is also important. For example, you should discuss with them that how are you going to stop these people from attacking within Pakistan territory? And that uh, do, you, do you want that you, you should return these people to us? We are prepared to take them back. Now, uh, various... Uh, uh, Gerisha, I'll come to this very important point that you have just highlighted, the role and the responsibility yes. of the interim Afghan government led by the Taliban over there. What happens to be their responsibility in regarding uh, meeting the demands of Pakistani authorities when it comes to handing over the people uh, uh, from the TTB or other banned organizations to the Pakistani authorities? Uh, Dr. Sh um, uh, Dr. Imam, what, what's your understanding regarding the dialogue and negotiations when it comes to uh, dealing with the banned organizations like TTP? Well, uh, the government of Pakistan uh, did a very commendable job. The armed forces and the police institutions, leadership, they all got together. They had this national action plan, which says all, you know, that how you are actually going to deal with the militants. Then we have national internal security policy two of them. The first one is from 2014 to 2018 and the other one is from 2018 to 2023. And there's a clear mention, uh, it has been clearly mentioned 
that there would be comprehensive response using non-kinetic means, changing the narratives, bringing up development programs, involving the locals and all that. Once these 10 operations were done and it was successful. Then there is a composite debt transplant which still exists to go and take kinetic against, against those people who are criminals. Now most of these people who have come back, like I said, they fleed from Afghanistan. They were even criminals as far as the laws of Afghanistan were also concerned. But they were let loose and they have come back to this part. Of. The second worrying aspect is the civilian element. Yes, there is a protest, but there is a lot of unemployment in the region, you know. And this ideologies and their narratives actually attracts. So it's very important that state, uh, the, the one uh, that they have dwelt upon a certain policy and strategy like Brigadier Saab is saying, let's clearly work on those policies. The situation is challenging, but we need will and dedication and diligence if we really want to respond. Otherwise, we'll just keep on talking and we will see uh, what has so, been happening so before. The National Action Plan that you've already mentioned, the things have been clearly in, enunciated in that. Do you think over the years there have been uh, implementation in letter and spirit on all those points which have been mentioned in that? It, it was in the, in the earlier years. There were apex committee, the courts were formed, and a lot was done in those areas. But the last uh, almost seven, eight years, you don't see any meetings, you don't see any get together, you don't see any assessment, evaluation. You see the most important point of the national action plans was point number 20, which I always protested, you know, reforming the criminal justice system of Pakistan. So which means the police, the prosecution, the courts and the prisons, you know, they needed to be updated, modernized, to be made scientific. It was last in the agenda. So such was the priority in the national action plan. Again, you have a strategy. Do you have a will? Now, you can't negotiate with criminals. If they lay down the arms, yes, you can talk to them. But they have to go through the drill and due process of being punished, you know, for what they, wrong they have done. Rule of law. You see, when the rule of law is not being respected, when the governance is done in a shabbily manner, when the house is, is disordered, you will see all sort of people coming out. These monsters, you know, they need to be taken to task. You know, they, they have been creating hell for the locals over there. And uh, I would uh, suggest, you know, uh, that the civil civil uh, authorities, they, they must right. be given the first year of responsibility. Right. Uh, Brigadier Shah, do you uh, think uh, that the points which were enunciated in the National Action Plan were implemented in letter and spirit? And uh, if not, what more was needed to be done and what now needs to be done in that regard? I think we must realize that this National Action Plan is a very, very comprehensive document. It is drawn up by the uh, Senate and uh, National Assembly uh, of this country. And I think if it is implemented and to whatever extent it is implemented, it will be good for the country uh, by itself, uh, not only in the um, corridor of this terrorism, but otherwise in the uh, judicial system, in the uh, criminal system. Uh, and I think uh, we've studied that document and has been and run up uh, with a lot of pens, and I think it must be implemented. That is, uh, there, there is no doubt in that. And the more we can implement, the better society we will have, particularly in these two provinces, that is Kepi and uh, Balochistan. So that's one uh, sort of thing. But here, uh, where we have gone wrong, is really mixed up uh, between the federal government and the provincial government. Law and order within the province is the responsibility of the provincial government. But uh, talking across the border to, uh, with someone and uh, taking care of that involves the federal government. And the federal government agencies uh, would also include the army uh, because they are on the border. And we see such situation in Azad Kashmir and we know what balance has to be maintained um, between the uh, defenses on the border and within six kilometers, what you do. And beyond it is the civil government, the Azad Kashmir government, which does. Here on this border, if it gets he, uh, heats up somehow, uh, then we have to uh, really uh, 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 look for that model to be implemented here. And we should not mix it up. Here, the provincial government, the provincial government... Uh, 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 rep representative 
is carrying out negotiation across the border. Um, I'm uh, talking about Muhammad Ali Saif, and he was with me in a program on Arch TV yesterday. And I was surprised that he says there should be negotiation. And negotiation by whom? And negotiation between whom? Negotiation between the government of Pakistan and the government of Afghanistan. And uh, in that, uh, the thing that what we have to do is that these are the people who are attacking across the border. You have taken the responsibility in Doha agreement and know how you are going to go about it. One way is that you take them. You have one purpose to assess you and, and, and dealing with them to the, your judicial system. We will send our legal people and they, they can bring you up what charges we have against them and uh, let them pass through that legal system and try to settle them down in the interior of Afghanistan, there's so many people who have gone like this from KP, at least I know, and even from from Balochistan, who have settled down in Afghanistan for good. Because these people uh, who are in TPP, when they come back, they will face uh, the people, the wrath of the people. They are, they are the ones who have killed many people in our society, and though they will like to take revenge from them. And that is why they are talking about negotiation and uh, seeking government protection. Uh, second, for example, uh, let me tell you that this border is not a very, uh, uh, very uh, sealed at all. If they want to come, they can come any time and let them settle in the area that they, they, they think that they, uh, they belong to. So the people will rise against them, and I think uh, that is where they want negotiate with the government and they won't, don't want so, and uh, they're talking Yenusha, about uh, when it comes to the responsibility of the provincial governments as you already have also mentioned the interior minister Rana Sanaul has also emphasized that the provincial governments in Balochistan and the KP also should take this matter seriously and also uh, said that the KPCM Mr. Mahmood Khan did not attend a recent security meeting chaired by Prime Minister uh, Sheba Sharif so uh, don't you think there should be a realization among all the political stakeholders uh, in order to defeat this common threat? Yes, absolutely. And I think if the um, chief minister uh, for their politics uh, are doing this, they will face the wrath of the people. For example, when this uh, sort of uh, uh, threat arose in Swat, uh, it rose right in his constituency. And he was not going there. Uh, probably he was scared, and uh, that was all hoax. Uh, uh, the, the, the police was there, with the army was asked, there is a brigade there in Swat. They were asked, he said, uh, have you deployed your police? Uh, have you deployed the uh, um, FC? Uh, you have a lot of wings of Swat scouts. Uh, you deploy them and find out who are these people, where I have they come from. So I think it was a political talk they have come back to the area, it was just the local people, you know, and the TV people are issuing uh, things to uh, the media. For example, they say, so-and-so is the governor for Mardan, and so-and-so is governor for uh, Peshawar. No, this is not Afghanistan. It is Pakistan. Oh, where, where are these governors? Uh, they cannot show their face. Otherwise, they will be arrested, eliminated. We have active police. We have FC, Frontier uh, Corps and Frontier Constabulary, uh, both here and in Balochistan. So when, the, uh, when it comes to internal sort of things uh, of the law and order, it is the responsibility of the provincial government. And uh, Rana Sanaula, our home uh, minister, he was reminding them of their responsibility and they cannot uh, go away from this responsibility after all there are people who are looking at all these things so i think uh, generally it's not much of an issue where the federal government has to handle is to have straight talks with the afghan government and i think that now uh, we have realized that other people were telling us that afghan government uh, probably will not be 
uh, show that responsibility that no for example it is our our responsibility to see that our file is not used against any other country for example india if they um, uh, blame for any attack coming across uh, from border they will hold us responsible and we are responsible we will tell them it will not happen same is towards afghanistan same is towards iran uh, right. we take our responsibility seriously and that is how this afghan government should also be made responsible that you do it and if they are not doing it then whatever it takes we are receiving across the border we should be prepared for it we have right. lot of frontier core we have uh, army and we have a strong army we have equipment uh, we have uh, uh, received uh, some new uh, drones and we should try them in this area that uh, how come you you uh, and instead in media like you know we are saying uh, should we be very concerned should we be very scared the question is should they be scared or should we be scared we are such a big state we are such a big army we are such a big sort of uh, paraphernalia we should be from these uh, the, these very people uh, who are just who have right. run away your point is well yes. taken brigadier shah very Thank pertinent you. point that you have highlighted actually who should be afraid that a terrorist group either it should be afraid from uh, that mighty power of a state or should state be uh, fearful from what they are um, announcing to do with the state we'll be discussing uh, more on this but right after a short break for that stay tuned Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Dine with World. We have some cold recipes, salads, juices. We're also making a pasta. My favorite segment of the show, sweets and desserts. Three teaspoons of mojito syrup, ice cubes, lemons. Mmm, very nice red vinegar. Good. This is really nice. This is our beetroot salad, which is ready to be served. You can make, I think, hundreds of sauces. Yum, yum, yum. And does it taste? Scallops, mussels. I love this about Thai food. Red chilies and everything. You don't want it to burn. Done. Really. Wow. Just like the name is very explicit, so seafood lovers don't really care what expression the fish is giving. So we've also added chicken mix. Yeah, you need the salad. to views on news in the studio we are joined by dr sayed kaleem imam and on skype we are joined by brigadier retired mahmood shah and uh, we've got another participant in the show on the phone line we are joined by mr kamran yusuf he's a senior journalist mr yusuf thank you very much for your time for being on uh, views on news there has been an uptick over terror incidents in pakistan how challenging this uh, happens to be for the pakistani authorities uh, it is indeed very challenging because uh, Pakistan has uh, paid a huge price uh, in eliminating all these groups. And uh, given that now these groups are uh, slowly and gradually making a comeback, this is a huge challenge. And I think one of the reasons that uh, these groups are really active once again or trying to assert themselves because uh, the expectations that we had from the Afghan Taliban uh, were not met because we were hoping that because of the change of government, the return of Afghan Taliban uh, uh, would help, uh, you know, deal with this matter. But it appears that things are uh, not uh, progressing as uh, we thought. So certainly uh, this is a huge challenge. And of course, that uh, given now that the TTP has uh, announced to resume uh, attacks across the country, certainly we need a strategy to deal with this uh, evolving situation. 
So, uh, so what do you think how the interim Afghan government could be impressed upon by the Pakistani authorities that they made a promise in the Doha peace deal and they have to uh, live up to that expectation of the neighboring countries especially? I think uh, first uh, they have to uh, live up to those promises. They have to fulfill those promises. And for example, that if they uh, do not even uh, meet the expectations of Pakistan, uh, let alone uh, other countries, then certainly uh, their recognition or formal recognition will become uh, next to impossible because if they can't uh, really satisfy uh, Pakistan's concern or address Pakistan's concerns, so how they can address concerns of other countries. So uh, I think uh, what they can do, of course, everybody knows that uh, TTP and its affiliates are currently operating out of uh, Afghanistan. What Pakistan is saying that neutralize uh, that threat, uh, but uh, we know that initially they refused. They said that uh, Afghan Taliban refused. They said that they could only offer their good offices and to broker some kind of a peace deal. And then Pakistan had to uh, agree with this, uh, uh, you know, offer uh, by the Afghan Taliban. And, and it, it was because of this reason that uh, Pakistan initiated talks with uh, the TTP, although many critics believe that that was not a wise strategy. Now, since uh, this uh, uh, offer of talks or this peace efforts uh, are not paying dividends, I think it is in incumbent upon the Afghan Taliban uh, to deal with this threat head-on. Otherwise, I think this will not just create a security problem, but I believe this will also undermine Pak afghan bilateral relationship. So uh, why, Mr. Yusuf, do you think the Afghan Taliban couldn't take a decisive action uh, in order to eradicate um, organizations like these, like TTP, from the Afghan soil? Is it because that uh, during this one year of their rule in Afghanistan, they couldn't establish a complete uh, writ over there in the country? No, it is not like this. I think the major reason is that uh, uh, both Afghan Taliban and TTP are uh, actually same because they fought uh, uh, alongside against the U.S.-led foreign forces uh, after 9-11 attacks when Afghan Taliban uh, were ousted from power. Uh, the Afghan Taliban leadership and their fighters took refuge uh, in the erstwhile tribal areas of Pakistan and it was the TTP fighters that provided them uh, all the sanctuaries and, uh, you know, uh, the help. And now the Afghan Taliban feel that uh, it is their turn to return the favor. So basically, they both are same, and this is the reason. And the second reason, because Afghan Taliban believes that their number one threat or the challenge is Daesh Khurasan. So they fear if they take direct action against the TTP, the TTP fighters may join Daesh, and that can become a very important threat for their rule. So these are so, the reasons that Taliban are reluctant to take action against the TTP. Right, Mr. Yusuf, you highlighted a very important and interesting point over here. Returning of a favor, the Afghan Taliban think that uh, the, it's time for them to return a favor to uh, tariq -e taliban Pakistan. Rather, we have seen Pakistani authorities over the number of years have been contributing for a peace and a reconciliation in Afghanistan for the long-lasting peace and stability over their Pakistani authorities have been playing a pivotal role in that regard as well. So uh, don't you think it's high time for returning at least one favor to Pakistan uh, for all those favors Pakistani authorities had been making over the years? Absolutely, I think. And uh, it is also in the interest of the Afghan Taliban. Remember, if a country like Pakistan, uh, you know, uh, do not recognize the Taliban regime, and do not cooperate with them, they will not be able to address uh, the severe e economic crisis, the grave humanitarian crisis, because Afghanistan is a landlocked country, and without Pakistan's help, they cannot progress. So it is in their interest as well that they address Pakistan's concerns. But the problem is, somehow or the other, uh, they uh, uh, have the feeling that uh, they have defeated uh, the uh, superpower uh, of the world. So probably they are in this illusion that they can also manage, uh, you know, the affairs uh, on their own. And also, I believe that there are differences within the Afghan Taliban ranks. I understand that, for example, the Haqqani network within the Afghan uh, Taliban, uh, they were in favor of having good relations with Pakistan, and they were the ones uh, who were pushing for a peace deal uh, between Pakistan and the TTP. But then there are other groups 
uh, who despite, as you pointed out, that Pakistan has been, uh, uh, you know, facilitating dialogue, has been facilitating the Afghan Taliban, but somehow or the other, they have certain misgivings, uh, you know, against Pakistan. So uh, that is also complicating the uh, in, in entire right. problem. Uh, Mr. But I Mr. think Mr. the Yusuf, Afghan Taliban... is well taken. Beg your pardon for the interruption. One last question from you. When it comes to the domestic politics and this current threat, uh, what do you think happens to be the responsibility of all the political stakeholders at this point in time? Uh, because uh, the nation wants that already immense sacrifices in the cost which have been paid by the Pakistani nation in defeating terrorism and breaking its backbone from this soil are not wasted. I think this is the major worry, uh, and uh, the TTP uh, certainly understands this, that Pakistan currently uh, is facing economic challenges. Pakistan is currently uh, divided politically. Uh, they have no cohesion, and probably they feel that this is the best time to hit back. And uh, for political parties and other stakeholders, I think it is very important that on these issues, as far as security of Pakistan is concerned, war on terror is concerned, they need to think above their petty politics. But unfortunately, I don't see that this is happening in foreseeable future because uh, the differences between the political parties are so huge that I don't think so that they will be able uh, to bridge those differences anytime soon. But of course, that uh, the situation certainly warrants that we need to have a consensus policy, as we have seen after uh, the attack uh, on the army public school when we developed this uh, you know, national uh, action plan to deal with the threat of terrorism and extremism. That was a very comprehensive plan. But unfortunately, successive governments failed to implement uh, that plan. Had they done that, certainly the uh, situation would have been far better. Right. Your point is well taken, Mr. Kamran Yusuf, joining us on the phone line, senior journalist. Really appreciate your time for being on Views on News. And now, uh, Dr. Imam, what's your take regarding the responsibility of the political stakeholders in Pakistan? There was a national consensus after the horrific APS attack and the National Action Plan was formed. We saw all the political stakeholders coming together and uh, making a resolve to eliminate this curse once for all from this soil. Now, uh, there is an emphasis by the federal government to the provincial governments as well. What needs to be done in that regard? No, I, I believe that uh, intellectual dishonesty should be a crime. Once you decide that you have plan and you have a strategy, and then you don't want to actually implement it for some political expediency or some ad hoc gains, and ultimately masses suffer, you know, somebody needs to be held responsible. You see, like Kamran was saying, that these Talibans were eliminated. They all left the area. And the armed forces, you know, so many of my friends got martyrs from the civil, uh, uh, civil uh, uh, agencies and from the civil armed forces and from the police organization. So they laid down their lives against these goons and culprits who have a criminal mind, you know. So now once they were no more in those regions, the next, next part was to develop those regions, which was not done in a way it should have been done. Now you see you have a merged FATA. But the NFC has still not given the enough resources actually to go there and do the necessary development work, build capacity, build infrastructure, and all those things. As the, a, the development work had been going on after the merger. Hardly, hardly. I think it's less than even three percent of the NFC money which has been actually been given to FATA uh, to actually prosper and come up with their structure and infrastructure. The police stations have not been been built. The, ju the judicial system hasn't really come. The judges are sitting in the major cities and they hardly go to those areas. Even at many places, they're unmanned and they are just uh, for the sake uh, the, uh, for the sake of, say, you can say that we are just present over there. Actually, the system is not there on the ground. You see, you took an action. The next step was to develop it, which wasn't done. And as a result of it, the space has been created. The second thing is I keep on emphasizing the civil uh, authorities, that is the chief secretary, the entire administration, the law enforcing agencies, that is the inspector general and all, there are some very good officers out there. They need to be in the front. They need to they need to take this bull by the horns, you know. They are the person who should actually respond and the civil armed forces and the armed forces should come in their support. The talks, they should get at least fair representation in the talks. You have to involve these people. Your thirdly, I would say, you see, there is a federal element present over there. NACTA is a federal organization 
and it's collecting, inf uh, collecting information, collating in and is actually informing to the local people. IB is a federal agency which is present in the provinces. The civil armed forces, the 17 of them, the FCA and the Frontier Constable, they are all under Ministry of Interior. The Chief Secretary and the Inspector General, all the officials of the federal government. So, what they need to do is just pull up people at the provincial level and they need to take these people uh, on the front foot, you know. You can't negotiate with people, you know, people who have urged to uh, commit crimes. How can you negotiate with them, you know? You, you need to, uh, like, like they say, when you strike a monster, you need to kill him. So these are those monsters and they have subsequently become a Frankenstein monster. And it's time we take them on. So uh, uh, let's uh, talk about uh, the Afghan factor, the interim Afghan government. Uh, what happens to be their responsibility? Do you think they've failed in establishing the writ over there and they haven't kept up to that expectation, the promise that they made in the Doha peace deal? You see, uh, I think we need to have carried out a better study. Uh, the, uh, the, the NATO forces and the Western allies, they left abruptly. You saw the scenes, how the planes were leaving. Even the base commander didn't know that they were leaving. Even their president, they all just fled, you know. So the, even according to Doha agreement, they were not supposed to enter Kabul. But when the national Afghan forces, they left, so they all took over, you know. Secondly, we, we, need, to st we need to understand that uh, this all Pathans are actually Afghans, you know, from, from, the, the, from the inheritance. And they all link to each other, you know. So now TTP and TTA has been working together for the freedom struggle that they were making in Afghanistan. Uh, so they have a lot of common stakes. And like Kamran rightly says, there are some other elements now which is not in, their, um, in uh, much control, ISK, you know. And uh, there are things which are in control of TTA. There are things which are not control, uh, which they are not in, con completely in control, you know. So we need to understand that there's a thing that they can do. They will not go overboard. But we, one, one thing we should be clear, we should know what is our interest. Our, nobody is going to favor us. We should know what is our national interest. Right. Our national interest is anyone breaking the rule of law, take him to task. Right. Brigadier Shah Pakistan was exited from the great uh, list of FATF uh, recently. So there is a, a particular point of choking financing for terrorist and terrorist organizations in the National Action Plan. So it was quite an achievement on the part of Pakistani authorities over the number of years. Now, do you think, but uh, there, there'd been some peace spoilers in Afghanistan as well. Uh, when we talk about the eastern neighbor India in particular, it tried to create horrors when it came to Pakistan exiting that gray list also so after this success by pakistani authorities how worried uh, do you think it w india would have been and uh, they must uh, the uh, indian hand regarding these terrorist incidents can't be ruled out completely your take the government of the tta the uh, tariq taliban afghanistan uh, and their sort of uh, ability to really control all the territories within Afghanistan. And the second is that India is also involved in a proxy war against Pakistan. And they are using these people. So one is uh, that the Afghan government is uh, unable to control them. And the second is that money is coming to them. Uh, not only TTP, but there are some small organizations uh, like BLA and BRA and so on and so forth along the Balochistan border. Uh, so uh, India is the one who is involved in this proxy war. And uh, uh, when we are talking about Afghanistan, one is to talk straight to the Afghan government. And the second is that, of course, we should defend our border uh, as much as we can. I think we have the capability to, to do so very easily. And it's not only militarily. Afghanistan is dependent on Pakistan um, in so many ways. And I think in a certain case, for example, now when we look at this threat as a whole, we also must uh, really spell it out where the threat is. For example, maximum it is north to the Rishtan border, which is affected. If this place is affected, why don't we close the border for trade in that area? We may not close the complete uh, sort of thing, but the local people who are involved in trading, the Afghans, uh, they, they are going to put pressure on their government. They please do uh, let these people go away from this place because we cannot live. The um, central Afghanistan is fed 
from Ghulam Khan check post. Uh, so many trucks they cross every day, taking very strict. So if we apply our mind and apply our taxes, not only militarily, but along the whole range of our capability, uh, I think we can uh, really pressurize the Afghan government to behave and also these people. And uh, we, we are indicating to them that uh, possibilities are that you take them down in, um, uh, uh, in the interior of Afghanistan and settle them. Otherwise, uh, uh, we are going to do what we can for defense of right. our country. Uh, Brigadier Shah, uh, the border fencing was done. How crucial and important and significant do you think it was for better screening of such uh, uh, elements? I think it, is, it was a good idea and has been done, but it is not going to seal this border uh, absolutely. And you have seen that uh, there are many people uh, who are basically smugglers and they have been benefiting from, the, uh, from this border. They are the ones who are against uh, those fences and they uh, sort of uh, take the local leadership of the Taliban and uh, you have seen some attacks uh, being done against those uh, because it is their business, the, 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 these people uh, who are smugglers, smugglers of all kinds, you know, they are drug smugglers, they are uh, uh, big drug barons and uh, there are other smugglers uh, as well. So uh, there are so many factors, and I think we should just be uh, 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 really uh, strengthen our, our border all along and be very watchful. And we make these people to, to be habitual to this sort of thing now. Previously, you were going across this border as if there is no border. border. And uh, you will tell them that you will come through a visa. And they will say, what visa? Uh, this is our country. That is also our country. This is our country. And you know this whole, uh, all the uh, sort of facilities in Pakistan, if they have to go for Hajj, they go through Pakistan. If they go to for Umrah, they go to Pakistan. If they want to get a visa, uh, all you go to, to Islamabad, there are all these Afghans standing there getting visas from Islamabad. So uh, we have, they have a lot of dependency on Pakistan and where we can apply uh, a pressure, we should right, uh, for right. the benefit of our country. Brigadier Shah, your point is uh, well uh, taken. Dr. Imam, uh, when it comes to border fencing, how crucial it was for the better screening of such elements and how to secure it in the long run? Uh, I think it was very important and I think uh, uh, it was a great initiative which Pakistan took and they, they were able to build these fences and the, the armed forces and the civil uh, armed forces, you know, needs to get a credit for it. It was not easy. You know, very difficult terrain. There was a resistance out there, but these people, they stood their ground and they were able to fence that. But now all these are, like Brigadier Sahib is saying, is a smuggling route, you see. Most of them may, be not, may not be criminals, but they are doing a business over there and they believe that this business is their rightful business, you know. And so you see them breaking the fences, you see them uh, doing the smuggling from these regions, and the moment you see that the, some of those fences are broken, there will be some sort of a check post over there, local check post established by TTA or TTP, where they would like to have uh, some sort of a commission from these regions. Now, these, they were plucked. Now, there are some official routes, you know, but the, this Durand line, the, support, the line which is there over there, it's not easy to man because of the terrain, because of the conditions over there, and because of what has been happening during the Soviet war, what has been after, happening after 9-11, these things are not as they used to be. You know. But like I, uh, like I say, you know, uh, 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 being from academia, you know, I would say we, there was always an opportunity for us to follow what we planned and right. what we strategized, which, which we never did. And the study, you know, and we were right. just living on, trying to live on fall hopes that when TTA will be, your, will be there, your, things would improve. Your point is well taken. Uh, Dr. Sayyid Kalim, Imam Security Analyst, joining us in the studio. Thank you very much for your time. And on Sky, we were joined by Brigadier Retired Mahmoud Shah, Senior Analyst. Uh, Brigadier Shah, thank you very much for your time uh, also. So after there uh, is an uptick in the terrorist incidents in Pakistan, it happens to be the responsibility of the political stakeholders to sit together and form another national consensus in order to eliminate eliminate this scourge of terrorism from Pakistan once for all. With this note, we come to the end of today's views on news. Till the next one, take good care of yourselves.